Welcome to the Interaxis channel and Interaxis.io. Today we want to talk about NFTs or non-fungible tokens. They're really popular lately, especially when it comes to collectibles, when it comes to art. We're hearing a lot of NFTs. Uh, musicians are starting to release NFT uh, related music and we want to talk a little bit about what that is because NFTs go well beyond art and well beyond collectibles. They're a huge, huge, uh, of huge, huge interest and vastly important in the world of decentralized finance and in the, in the world of, of blockchain and just finance in general. So real quick, we got to break this down. What is an NFT? An NFT is a non-fungible token. So break that down. What does that mean? First, non-fungible versus fungible. Now, something that is fungible is exchangeable. It's the same. My dollar bill is the same as your dollar bill. They're exactly the same. My share of Tesla is the same as your share of Tesla. Okay, those are fungible. Something that is non-fungible might be something like real estate. Okay, real estate can be non-fungible. What do I mean by that? Your house is different than my house. Different address, different layout, di different everything. Okay, a, a home, like it's not just square footage under a roof. They're very different. So those are things that are non-fungible. Art is non-fungible, right? There's only one work of art. I have work on, uh, a work of art on my wall. There's probably only one of those or very few of those. Okay, that is non-fungible. And usually they're numbered, right? Works right are numbered. So that's non-fungible because there's only one number one of some certain series of art. Those are non-fungible. And that's where we've seen this growth is the idea of something that is that there is only one of, or there are only a few of, or that we can uh, break or break potentially into uh, smaller pieces. So where, where are non-fungible tokens being used now? We are seeing digital art being created. Now the one thing is, you, you know, you have to like the art. That, that's one thing. If you're investing in, if you're even looking at, there's digital art that's being created. But the beauty of it is utilizing blockchain technology means that we can decide there's only a limited number of these and it's verifiable that there's a limited number. We can look on blockchain and see that there's verify there's only this limited number. If someone else tries to take some piece of art and, and, and take a screenshot of it and try to sell it somewhere, we can go verify that it's not valid. The same thing right now that you might pay an appraiser to do in the, in the traditional art world, you can just do on, on chain just going, is this valid or not? Is this actual or not? Not only is there a limited number, but now I can sequentially number them. So it can be one out of a hundred of something. And maybe version one, they could all look exactly the same, but number one is valued differently than number 99. Okay, we, we see that happening, playing out in the digital art and collectible world. So people are creating these works of art digitally and selling them. And they could be selling them based on who, you know, whoever they are. It could be based on the beholder that, that sees some value in the art and likes it. Or they could just say, look, this is a good investment because there's only one of these. There's only 50 of these and I got number one. Or I got number 25 because it's it's uh, it was going at a at a discount. You know, it's, it was selling for less than number 24 was or something. That's where it, it's so uh, important. This idea of non fungible tokens. So we're seeing it in digital art. We're seeing it in collectibles. Right? We there's there's uh, you know NBA Top Shot, which is big because they're taking these moments and they're releasing them, and they're only creating a certain number of them, and they're all numbered. So there might only be five thousand of a particular moment, which is a video, and based on the importance of that, they you know I might get number one of that five thousand, and based on the player and the importance of the game where it was and whatever they did, it might have more or less value and we get to trade and we get to decide what that value is based on the market, but it's verifiable how many there are and what number mine is. Whereas in the past, things like collectibles, the, the company producing them only made money if they made more and more and more of them, thus driving down the value. Now they can release collectibles and make money on the trade. They can make money on the marketplace, where if I sell it to you, that company still gets 2.5% or 5% uh, of, the, of the value exchanged, and therefore now it's in their best interest uh, to provide some level of scarcity and verifiable scarcity. That is a really important topic. Verified 
scarcity. And I can verify it on chain. Now, I talked a little bit, that, that's a little bit about NFTs, about what we're seeing in art and collectibles. Now we're seeing it in music, where musicians can release their records, they can release their, their songs, their music, and have it all be verified on chain. This is my, my record, my release. Now, once they do that, they can actually get paid as that music is being played. Right, because it's because so much of it is digital. Because they can they can have this NFT version of it, and as it gets played, they can get paid a little bit. Well, based on DeFi, I might be able to participate in that. I might give that artist a thousand dollars to own a piece, and every time that song is played, my little token, my little piece of ownership, because I have an NFT. We'll go back to this. So let's say this. I might have. Okay, artists release a, a, a record. I might pay a thousand dollars, or you know what, we'll call it a thousand USDC because we want to keep consistent here. A thousand USDC to own an NFT that represents, you know, one percent of that particular record. And every time that record's played, and one USDC gets paid to this particular record, I get one percent of that. Okay, that comes to me. Well, that's really valuable. That's a way that artists can start funding themselves. They can just say, look, uh, you know, musicians can go, I'm going to create these songs, and if anyone believes in me and likes them, you can buy a little bit, give me a little bit of money up front, and every time this song is played, you get a, a little bit of it. Now we're taking some of the financing out of the, the realm of the music producers and out of the realm of the of, of the big uh, record labels and out of the realm of the banks and saying we're going to give more people access to help out musicians or help out artists. The other way that NFTs work, remember I mentioned early on that an NFT could be real estate. Okay, An NFT could be part of a my ownership in a private company. That is where we see trillions of dollars flowing into decentralized finance. So an NFT can be you know, a, a real estate deal. So I might own a piece of this real estate deal, and, we, and we've talked about security tokens, but this is essentially what it is. A security token is a non-fungible token that might represent my ownership in a real estate offering, a real estate investment, or it might, in, in, it might be my ownership in uh, a private equity deal, or a hedge fund deal, or a bond, or something, and now is, is um, denominated or denoted by this token that is on chain, which means it can all be verified. So if I take this NFT and try to get a loan from, uh, again, we will stick with decentralization and there's some DeFi based lender, they can verify this NFT on chain that I actually have ownership in this particular real estate deal and maybe they lend me money. Okay, and this can all be verified like that. That's going to be the beauty of NFTs. Now, this NFT can be real estate. It could be my ownership in this particular song. It could be this work of art, right? And because it's NFT, because it's token-based, if I want to pledge my art, my, my digital art as collateral, or even ownership in real art as collateral, I can do so because this lender, this DeFi lender says, you're going to pledge that as collateral. And if you don't pay, we'll just own it now. It's all on chain anyway. Okay, so that's the beauty here. I can use potentially my collateral, my collectibles as collateral now. They have value. Everyone can see that this is real. There's nothing counterfeit here. Things I would have to pay an appraiser for in the past, I don't have to do that anymore. It's all done on chain. So this is the beauty of, of NFTs. Now, NFTs can even include other things. So again, this NFT for, the, for real estate means that I own a piece of it. I own a piece of some deal, but maybe my NFT also gets me the ability to stay at this hotel chain five days out of the year or something like that. Maybe it gets me that. Maybe you know it gets me a piece of the income. Maybe the fact that I bought an NFT for some record means that yes, I, I will get paid for it, but maybe it also means that I get a private party with that artist at some point. When, when their record gets a million plays, I get a private party because I was one of the investors. I can prove it because I have this NFT sitting in my wallet. That's my ticket into the party. Okay, if I buy a collectible from some basketball player, maybe I get tickets to a game. Maybe I get in a raffle, and I can prove it all. 
So NFTs are going to be wildly important. We see it really hot right now in the terms of digital art and even in terms of music and collectibles, but it's going to be so much bigger than that because the fact that these are all verified, scarce, on-chain, all these aspects means that now they can be part of the decentralized finance ecosystem. So that is a little bit, just a small bit, about NFTs and you can go to some other videos and learn how to create your own and, and learn how to participate in that market. But that is a little bit about what NFTs are and why we feel like they are so important and going to continue to be so important in the decentralized finance ecosystem that's being built. So we hope you like this video. We hope you subscribe here. Check out our website. We have more courses coming to help you understand how to invest, what decentralized finance is, uh, how, how to keep your money safe in, in DeFi and crypto and all of that. And uh, we hope you'll follow us on Twitter at Interaxis8, and we hope to see you in the next video.